It turns out New York Governor Andrew Cuomo isn't just the darling of the Democrat Party. He's also the guy who apparently covered up the deaths of thousands of old people and who allegedly gropes and harasses women and gets away with it because, hey, who actually needs morals or ethics when you've got a D next to your name on the ballot, right? While leftists were busy accusing Republicans of murdering the elderly, Cuomo was shoving sick people into nursing homes and they were dying by the thousands and he was covering it up. While the media were holding him up as a righteous paragon of truth and leadership, his staffers say they were subjected to years of abuse, harassment, and even assault. And apparently everybody knew about it and just didn't say anything. Because see, liberals get to play by a whole other set of rules, don't they? They get to hold themselves up as our moral arbiters and accuse conservatives of hate speech and sexism and violence, while the skeletons pile up in their own closets and the media turn a blind eye. And you can't say a word about it because that's whataboutism, and you're supposed to be better than that. Y'all know this is exactly how we got Donald Trump, right? Because people got so sick of listening to sermons on morality and justice from leftists who wouldn't know basic decency if it smacked them in the face with a Bible. And this is why millions of Americans aren't going to just sit down, shut up, and take it anymore. They're not ready to just move on. They're pissed. And this proves exactly why they should be. The governor of New York is now neck deep in more scandals than he can count, which is not shocking considering he's apparently got a problem with numbers, like the COVID death count in his state, where he's now under investigation for allegedly covering up the number of elderly people who died from the coronavirus after he just started shoving sick people into care facilities. Not only did Cuomo mandate that nursing homes accept sick patients back into their facilities, which wound up spreading the virus like wildfire and infecting the most vulnerable. Now it turns out his office intentionally covered up the number of old people who died because of this reckless policy by thousands, which his own office admits they did because they were worried about an investigation. <laughs> Oops. But I guess it makes total sense Cuomo wasn't keeping track of how many old folks were just keeling over thanks to his insane mandates because apparently he was too busy sexually harassing the women in his office. Or at least that's according to new allegations made by his former staffer, Lindsay Boylan, who says Cuomo openly harassed and even assaulted her while she worked for him. According to Boylan, the New York governor asked her to play strip poker while on a private jet, repeatedly compared her to his ex-girlfriend and even started calling her by this other woman's name, groped her, gave her private tours of his office, and even once kissed her without her consent. When she finally complained to her boss, Boylan says she was told to shut up and fall in line. So eventually, she quit. Now, just to remind everybody here, we have to believe every single word this woman says because, well, she's a woman. And by the left's own standards, this means everything she says is true and accurate. And Andrew Cuomo is officially a serial abuser who harasses and assaults women. Their rules. I did not set up this Monopoly board. So let me see if I'm understanding here correctly. The left repeatedly accused Donald Trump of killing old people by not controlling an airborne virus, which was apparently something he was supposed to be able to do as president of the United States. When he halted travel from other countries, he was a racist. When he sped up the production of a vaccine in record time, he got no credit for it. It was all still his fault because orange man bad. But over in the Empire State, we've got a guy who was actually killing old people through a level of incompetence that's stunning beyond belief, and frankly, that's saying something for New York politics. And all of that was happening while the liberal media and the Democrat Party were slobbering all over his shoes as if he were the second coming. Here's a dude who was apparently groping women and slaughtering the elderly, and he's winning Emmy Awards and publishing a book like a freaking celebrity. And I know this isn't shocking. At this point, it's par for the course. And you know what? That is exactly the problem. It is vital to keep pointing this out, and here's why. This is why millions of Americans are so ticked. And why, no, they won't just sit down and be quiet, because while Trump was fighting a forever uphill battle against media lies and left-wing fear-mongering over the coronavirus, because God knows that man couldn't scratch his nose without catching crap for it, here was a guy arguably getting away with murder and apparently assault, and a whole mess of people knew, and nobody said a word. Trump was tearing through federal red tape like it was tissue paper trying to roll out a vaccine and getting nothing but grief for his trouble, while Andrew Cuomo was shoving sick people in with 90-year-olds and he didn't get a slap on the wrist. He 
he got an award. It took Janice Dean screaming about the issue for six months before the ball finally got rolling, and now we find out, according to Assemblyman Ron Kim, it wasn't even like Cuomo's tactics were some big secret. You know, everyone in your politics knows he has been abusive for a long time to his staff, elected officials, even journalists. So I received a call from Cuomo threatening and ordering me to issue a statement that he can use to cover up for his top aide. So if it was that obvious to everyone, why didn't anybody say anything? Why didn't state lawmakers speak up? There are Republicans in that legislature. Where were they? Where were the journalists who were supposedly fighting for women and the elderly? Why didn't they say anything? Because this always seems to be the way of it for the guy with the D by his name, right? It's the same reason Joe Biden can get away with running the same exact detention facility for migrant kids at the border that under Trump, the media were calling concentration camps. They're the same shipping containers, the same tents, the same fencing, but when a Republican president did it, he was keeping kids in cages. When Biden does it, it's a border facility for children. When Mike Pence says he doesn't have dinner alone with women who aren't his wife because he wants to avoid the very appearance of indecency, he's a sexist pig. When a New York liberal invites women at his office and gropes them, shut up, he's a hero. When Black Lives Matter burns a town, it's peaceful protesting. When a conservative misgenders someone, it's violence. And this is precisely what people got so sick of in 2016. This is how we got Trump. It wasn't because tens of millions of white guys suddenly woke up one morning and said, hey, you know what, I think I'll be a racist now. For millions of people, it wasn't actually even about Trump at all, and it still isn't. It was about someone, anyone, who was willing to finally come out of this corner swinging, and it's why people are not willing to just go back to the way things were. So to all the politicians out there wagging their self-righteous fingers in the American people's faces, to all the Republicans telling people they need to let go of the last four years and move on, let me put this simply. So long as these double standards continue, so long as liberals keep getting away with murder while the media wage a war against every conservative who sneezes wrong, so long as this kind of nauseating hypocrisy is allowed to go unchallenged until the damage is done, people will continue to scream for someone who will call this crap out for exactly what it is and actually do something about it because they've played this tired game against stacked decks for years. And they're done. And that's your Reality Check America. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube and Rumble page, like us on Facebook and Twitter, and stay sane out there.